Hey there! If you're watching this video, you've either read an article I wrote on compliant mechanisms or you just got lucky YouTube video hunting. Anyway, here's a little preview of a compliant spring we 3D printed here at Go Engineer. In this short video, I'd like to walk you through how I set up the finite element analysis with SOLIDWORKS simulation to ensure the arms are strong enough to endure the actuation of the spring. Now, since the model was created in SOLIDWORKS, it is completely parametric and the arm dimensions can be altered at will. Now let's get started with the analysis. Here a non-linear analysis will be used to test the strength of the model. Notice the new analysis menu in 2018 with an additional topology optimization option. Now like every analysis, we will start by assigning material properties to the model. In the nonlinear analysis tool, we have access to a number of material models ranging from post steel metal behavior to hyperelasticity. For this analysis, we will stick to a linear ABS material. Now to simulate the spring, the constraint conditions are key. We will start by fixing the circumference of the stator to facilitate relative motion of the rotor. I'm referring to the two frames here. Next, we will impose roller slider constraints to prevent the axial motion of the model. This significantly reduces the number of degrees of freedom and improves analysis times. The next constraint will be the rotational input to the spring. Using the axis as a reference enables the user to input an angular displacement. For this analysis, a displacement amount of about 135 degrees will be specified. Finally, for additional stability, we will apply a constraint that forces the axis of the rotor and the stator to remain in line. Again, I'm talking about the two frames. Once the an analysis is complete, you will notice that a majority of the stresses are in the outer fibers of the arms. In fact, in one of our 3D printing tests, the arms split at these locations during operation, so we had to come up with a different printing strategy in terms of layer resolution. Now the areas where the arms meet the frame, which might be taken as a weak point, seems intact and well below the material yield strength. Now I've animated the stress plots as well to look at the change in stresses with the spring motion. Finally, the force displacement curve can be determined by using the resultant force menu in the results. Note that this plot can be updated to reflect forces in the cylindrical coordinates by selecting the component axis in the pink reference box. Selecting the response graph generates the force displacement curve that then can be used as feedback to tune the spring. Hope you found this quick setup useful. Now if you'd like to read the article, you'll find the link to it in the video description. This is Arun Taravyam and thanks for watching.